Good morning, everybody. How are you? This is Holly Burby. I am a relationship coach that helps people navigate bumpy situations in their romantic partnerships and get back to a place of win-win. Um, so good morning. How are you? Welcome to the live stream. If you are catching this live this morning, go ahead and put a one in the comments or type the word live. If you're watching this on a replay later on, put a two in the comments or come or put the word replay. And regardless of when you tune in, please tell me where you're watching from. Um, I have affectionately termed my live streams, the Holly show. Good morning, Alicia. How are you? Um, I actually didn't call it that. My cousin named it that years ago, uh, when I used to do these on a regular basis and I brought it back last week. Week, so uh, affectionately known as the Holly Show. But the point is, is I will be here uh, Monday through Thursday at 8.30 a.m. ish <laughs> Eastern. I'm, I'm getting better at getting closer this morning. I was behind again. Um, and my purpose every day is to share something with you that can support you in your romantic partnerships in your life, in your dating life, but also in the relationships that you have professionally, personally, uh, with friends, with uh, your children, and so on and so forth. Pardon me here as I'm multitasking behind my phone because I typed up my notes for today's session, uh, for today's call, today's video, whatever you want to call it, uh, so I don't forget. So today's episode, what I'm going to be talking with you about is something that I mentioned yesterday on May 9th of 2022, um, which is why partner get why a partner would typically get defensive. And I said during that live stream, does anybody want me to talk about, um, <laughs> do a video on defensiveness and what would cause uh, your partner to be defensive in your relationship consistently or what might cause you to become defensive in your relationship. Um, and I had a bunch of people yesterday comment and say, yes, do that. So uh, before we get started, I just want to remind you because I'm giving Facebook a minute to tell people that we're here. I'm also going to get water. Um, I want you all to know that if there is ever something I say in a video or um, even in one of my shorter videos that I post here or on Instagram or on TikTok, if you want something like a further in-depth conversation of that topic, um, you can always DM me and say, hey, do a Holly show on this. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? Uh, where are you watching from? So you can you can always message me or leave a comment and say, I would love to hear more about this topic. And I'm happy to jump in and um, do one of the Holly shows Monday through Thursday about it. So that is how this topic came about today. I typed up my notes last night so I don't forget. Uh, but essentially today's session, this topic is three reasons why your partner is defensive in your relationship. Oh, Edinburgh, that's so funny. Do you know that I knew someone from Edinburgh and then just the other day, um, he reached out to me just to be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's been a decade. How are you? Because I think I popped up on his TikTok, which is funny. Um, good morning. Hello, Melanie. Hi, good morning. Uh, I know that's so, how random. That's so funny. Uh, but yeah, I do know about Edinburgh. Uh, good morning, Chuck. Hi, mom. <laughs> See, my mom is always here when she can be. I know how, what a small world and weird timing too. How funny. Um, okay, so let's get going. Thank you everybody for being here. Again, if you're watching live, please put a one in the comments or type live. If you're watching later on a replay, please type two in the comments or type replay. Those comments, when you give thumbs up, when you give hearts, when you leave a comment, it simply helps the video to gain more traction. And also this video is always set to public. So if there's something about it that you think someone in your life could benefit from, please share it. Share it in a DM to somebody. Share it on your personal page. I would really appreciate it. All right. It's been enough time. People now are here. So the three reasons why your partner is defensive in your relationship. I talked about this on a coaching call with a client not that long ago. And this is something I've considered in my own life as well. And I sat down last night and typed it up for myself so that I wouldn't forget something because I felt so clear on it when I was coaching on it. Um, <laughs> yes. Hi, Alicia. Again, um, so it's really important that I get all three of these right. So let's talk about what I mean by defensiveness. Something that people may notice in a relationship is they may go to their significant other, or maybe they even go to someone that they are related to, like a parent, okay, um, or someone that they're close to, and they might ask them for something. Hey, could you do this? 
or hey, why didn't you do this? Or I don't know, just approaching them and asking them for something or mentioning that it's either what triggers the defensiveness typically is you have asked them for something like a, st- a straight out question or what can trigger defensiveness is you have um, gotten to a place where you say, you know, I need something like I need I need more compliments. I need more affection. I, I need help around the house. OK, it, it could be anything. You either request it with a question or you state it as a statement. And this person often becomes defensive and starts defending themselves. Well, why would they do that? Overall, there is some semblance of accusation that they are feeling. Now, might you have an accusatory tone with them? Sure, you might, okay? And that might be setting off the trigger as well. But let's say you feel like when you've made the request or asked for what you need, let's say you're expressing it and you feel like you're being really, really neutral. (laughs) You're like, what are you so upset about? So these are really about those moments where you feel like, Um, these are really today, these three reasons of why your partner might get defensive. This is really addressing those situations where you feel you're asking for something and you know that you're not asking in a heated way, an emotional way. You're just neutrally asking. You're not picking a fight. Okay. So then if you're being super neutral and cool about it, why would your partner get defensive? Okay. Alicia says, I'm in a dead zone. I'll have to check back on the replay. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, good morning, Karen. Hi, how are you? All right. So three reasons why your partner is defensive in your relationship. So now that I've explained what that defensiveness looks like, okay, the first reason why they might be getting defensive when you ask them for something or bring something up or just simply state something in a neutral, non-confrontational way is because they are interpreting your request as you telling them that they are not doing enough. They are interpreting your request or your statement as if you are saying to them, you are not doing enough in the relationship. Hi, Yvonne. Good to see you. I'm like, I'm so thrilled for you and Leah. Congratulations on your wedding, by the way. I love you both. I miss you both too. Um, Good to see you. Thank you for saying hello. So again, a person is it's not, so it's not that, so you've asked for something, you're being very neutral about it. And then all of a sudden they just start saying, I don't know, they start arguing with you or, but I did this, or I look at all the things that I do in the house already. Or you might say, Hey, I need more love and affection, or I need more words or compliments. And they might say something like, well, don't I do like, don't I give you compliments already? Don't I do this? What? So this is the first reason why they're getting defensive. There is some filter in them that is interpreting your request or your ask as you saying that they do not do enough. Now, that is not what you're saying at all, um, but they hear it that way. And what that often can be explained, how do you get out of that? You want to explain to them, like, I'm asking for this, not because you're not doing enough. And they might not even use those words, but that's where that comes from. So you could say to them something like, listen, yes, you do so much around the house already. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate the help. Today, I'm asking for a little extra. I just need a little extra today. Um, And I would really appreciate if you could give me a little extra today because I'm extra tired and I really could use a little extra support on this end. Or it could be something like, yeah, you, you, yes, yes, honey, you're, you're super loving. You're super generous. You do compliment me all the time. I'm just feeling really gross about myself today or crappy in my body today. And I just need a little extra love today. So if you sense that, that reason number one, good morning, Kaylin. Good morning. Hi. Thank you for saying hi. Um, if you sense that your partner is getting defensive Um, It might be coming from a place of like, they might be thinking that they don't do enough. And those are some things you can say to counterbalance that. Okay, reason number two, that your partner might be getting defensive if you ask something of them or present something um, really neutrally and you're not starting anything with them is they might become defensive um, because, hold on a second. Oh, because someone in their life currently or in their past may have been the type of person that accused them often of not doing enough. So their response of defensiveness is an automatic response. So for example, let's say your significant other, when they are at work, every single time they do something, they are not 
They are not shown gratitude. They are not thanked. They are always asked for more. They are always told that what they do or what they did could have been or should have been a notch above, should have been better. And so what happens is they are living in a zone in their life, in this, in this example, in their workplace, where they're constantly having to defend um, against someone who is accusing them of actually not doing enough. And so what happens is then they come home and it's in their automatic response, okay? That if you ask for something, it just flips that switch. It can be a trigger of like, oh, now you don't think I do enough. Now you don't think that I'm helping enough. Now you don't think I love you. And you're just like, whoa, wait a minute. Nope, not me. I don't know where that came from, but that is not me. This also can happen if in a previous relationship, they might have experienced this with a significant other as well. Um, because we do often bring patterns from our exes into our current relationship. Even if it's someone from years and years and years ago, even if it's someone, a relationship we have healed from, we are past it a decade ago. Some of these um, relationships that we had, or if it was a relationship, the situation where we were being accused by our parents it, when we were kids, some of these um, trigger moments that want us to defend ourselves come from a really deep wiring that started at a relatively young age. Either we were a kid or it was with our first love or even like into our 20s or into our 30s. Some of these things, they linger because they're deep. So reason number two they might get defensive with you is because they're hearing accusation, but it's not what you are presenting. It, it's, it's a trigger response from something that is happening in another zone of their life, like at work or with their family, um, or it's something that has happened in the past, okay? So that's the second reason. So type yes below or tell me something in the comments so far that's hitting home for you if this is helping or be like, this helps a lot. Tell me something in the comments, give me something. And again, thank you for watching. I've got one more reason to share with you. Um, Kaylin says, I very much appreciate the conversations you have with us about neutral and positive communication. I know all this pertains to relationships. However, I find this to be helpful in all walks of life. So thank you. Well, thank you, Kaylin. You know what? Maybe that that's actually a great topic about neutral and positive. <laughs> I think I'll, uh, maybe I'll do a show about that one because um, I don't have a topic for tomorrow yet, but that's a, actually a really great topic. So thank you for saying that. Um, and it is true. And I think a lot of the things that I'm presenting here on a daily basis or almost daily basis right now is intended to be able to transcend to other areas or transfer rather to other areas. Um, so I'm glad that that is one of them and I will absolutely do a show on that because I neutral is really, really important in relationships and it's also maybe the most difficult, maybe the most difficult. So I'll, I'll do a show on that. All right, last reason. Reason number three, why your partner might be getting defensive when you are simply asking them for something, asking them for more love, asking them for more help. And you're asking them in a very neutral way. You're very calm. And suddenly they're like defending themselves. And you're like, ah, what is this about? Why are you being so defensive? Reason number three, they may be defensive because, well, you actually are questioning them. <laughs> and they might feel like you are questioning them, that you might be questioning their word, that you might be questioning their integrity, or you might be questioning, here's a fun one, their ability to get something done. I think the ability one is probably the biggest one. Um, sometimes, again, it kind of uh, parallels the first reason where like they're hearing your request as you saying to them that they do not do enough. But sometimes when we ask someone for something, the defensiveness is coming from, oh, they don't think I did that good enough. They don't trust me. They don't think I can follow through with this. They don't think I can love them properly. They don't think I can clean up the house properly. They don't think I can get the kids ready for school properly. Insert it here. Oftentimes a request when presented in a certain way, um, your partner may get defensive because they think that you're questioning their ability to even do something. Now, we are all guilty of this one because I'm going to tell you how many times especially for the women, sorry. But if you, <laughs> it's true though, how many times have we asked our partner to do something and then they do it and then we redo it? Type, that's me in the comments if you've done that before. I would be typing, that's me right now. You've asked your partner to do something and then they do it and then you go redo it like put the dishes in the dishwasher and you don't like how they loaded the dishwasher, so you redid it. Or you ask them to fold the clothes 
and they fold the clothes, but you don't know how they don't like, you don't like how they did it. So you go redo it or they, you ask them to like chop the onion and they start chopping the onion and you're like, no, that's the wrong way. And then you, <laughs> that means laughing. type that to me if you've done this. Cause I know, I know we've done this and maybe not with your significant other, but maybe you've done this with your kids, even with your adult kids, right? Like, well, that's not the right way. When we do that, it will cause someone to become defensive because they feel that we are questioning their ability to do something, okay? So the correction around that is when we do ask for something, when we're making that initial request of, I need more help around the house, that's not specific enough, okay? That is, yeah, yeah, guilty, so Stephanie. That is not specific enough. We cannot say, I need more help around the house. It needs to sound more like, can you take, hey, this garbage, can you take this garbage out before 6 p.m. or in the next hour? It's got to have an exact task, where it's going and what time. This can also support you as a parent too, if you're still raising kids at home, because oftentimes we ask people to do something, but we don't tell them by when. And some people have a natural sense of urgency and they just go and they get it done. Some people do not have a sense of urgency. <laughs> and so they think they have forever to get it done. But if we say something like, can you empty the dishwasher in the next 20 minutes? Can you get your pajamas on uh, before eight o'clock? Like tell them by when and people will start moving. Some people and, and young and kids and they don't have that sense of urgency. We've got to tell them what you want done and the specificity on it. Um, instead of just saying like, oh, help around the house. And then they go and they do something that they, they think is helpful around the house. And then it's not what you wanted or it's not at the right time you wanted, and then you get upset, and then now they think that you're questioning their ability to do something, and now, <laughs> um, and then now they are becoming defensive, okay? Um, not reclamation, rec oh, okay, so Kaylin says, um, I always go, re oh, I always go reclean the counters in the kitchen after my fiance cleans the kitchen, but he only uses water, and I prefer some type of cleaning chemical. I learned to do it discreetly and not point out that was done wrong because it's my preference and he doesn't feel it's necessary. So I decided to pick my battles. I think that's a great example. Um, I like that you're doing it discreetly. I like that it actually comes down to a set of differences here because he doesn't feel it's necessary and you do. Um, now, if it was just, now, if he didn't really care if you use the cleaning or not, the solution, then you could just be like, hey, can you spray it? when you do it next time. Like I, I prefer it when it's with sprayed down. But if he's like, no, we don't need to do that. You're right, just pick your battle, you know? And we can still say, thank you for wiping the counters down. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I think, I think that's a great example. And those are things that cause huge arguments in relationships and they don't need to, okay? So thank you everyone for being here. Those are the three reasons why your partner is defensive in your relationship. Give me a one if you put, um, if you tuned in live at all or type the word live, put a two in the comments if you watch on the replay or type the word replay. Thank you for thumbs up. Thank you for hearts. Thank you for comments. Every single comment, like, heart, it really helps this video get bumped um, and gain traction. And it's always set to public. So if you feel that this video could really support anybody um, in your life, you please share it on your page, DM it to a friend. I would super appreciate it. And I super appreciate all of you tuning in and your support. Um, Stephanie says, love seeing you live. Have been watching your reels for a while. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. You know, Stephanie, that was a big part of why I brought it back. Thank you, Kaylin. You have a lovely day too. Um, I was a big part of why I wanted to bring the live streams back. I did them a number of years ago, very regularly like this. Um, and then my, my Facebook following just like blew up this year. I'm, I'm now at, I was at a thousand followers in January and right now I'm at 12,500. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So people are showing up and I, and I figured I would give more long form um, content, you know, and I also make a lot of short form content over on TikTok and on Reels and I post it here. Um, but people like the long form too. So um, thank you for the feedback on that. Uh, I will probably do a, a Holly show tomorrow about neutral languaging. I think that's really important, how difficult it is, how to learn how to do it. 
Um, so thank you everyone for being here. Just a quick reminder, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, June 6th, 7th, and 8th will be a mini boot camp, which is called the three secrets to better communication in your relationships. If you are interested in that boot camp, it is only $37. It's 45 minutes a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, June 6th, 7th, and 8th, uh, live with me on Zoom face to face. So if you're interested in that, type boot camp in the comments below and I will get you the sign up link as soon as it's ready. So until tomorrow, I will be back with another Holly Show episode, 8.30 a.m. Eastern-ish tomorrow on Wednesday. Um, I love you all so much. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for the likes and the shares. And until tomorrow, love always in always. Bye.